Welcome to Tom's Messian vlog, episode three. Now in episode two, I talked about Messian's uh, Livre de saint Sacrement movement seven, and amongst other things, I showed you the opening music, which also concludes the piece, where Messian, using his technique communicable language, spells out a particular word, letter by letter. Uh, this technique, by the way, I'm going to give the briefest of introductions to in this video, uh, but if you want to learn more about it, Messiaen describes it all in the introduction to his previous organ cycle of 1969, but there's also other places which you could look uh, for a summary. So, for example, uh, the Robert Sherlock Johnson book Messiaen, that's my book recommendation for the day, great starting point. Anyway, what is communicable language? Well, so th this idea of spelling a word out in music, it's, it's nothing new, um, as so far as it goes, so uh, if we look at the German musical alphabet for a moment. Uh, what we in the English-speaking world would call B natural, uh, a German musician would call H. B flat for us becomes B for a German, thus you get B, A, C, H. Bach. And Bach, um, needless to say, noticed that he could spell his own name on the keyboard, or in, in music anyway, so he did so many, many times. And in the generation since, multiple composers, notably on the organ Liszt and Schoenberg, spell out the word B-A-C-H, the, uh, the letters B-A-C-H to give you the word Bach, the name Bach. Uh, if you wanted to spell something that has letters that aren't in the musical alphabet, uh, well, you just describe those letters to particular pitches, and hey presto, there are various ways of doing that, and de Rufle does it to spell Jean Alain's name, Alain, uh, in his Prelude and Fugue, for example. Messiaen takes this a bit further. It's not just about saying that A is going to be the letter A and the letter I or whatever. Um, this is uh, about register as well. So uh, Messiaen ascribes a uh, high or low register to particular letters um, and also duration. It's about how long the notes last. Each, each individual letter has a different duration. And so this is what it sounds like when Messiaen spells out the word la joie at a really important moment, a climactic moment in the final movement. <laughs> La joie, joy, it's, a important, it's, an, it's an important word, it's an important theme, concept, uh, in this final movement, which is an alleluia. So that's that, that's the spelling out of a word. It doesn't have to be an octave, by the way, often it is, um, and some, but sometimes the, there are harmonies underneath it. And we can take things a bit further still, because Messiaen also was very much inspired by, amongst other things, Wagner's leitmotifs. And so Messiaen created his own leitmotifs um, to, for certain words. Thus we move to movement 11. Now this is the movement where the risen Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. And there's a section towards the end of the piece where Messiaen is reflecting on John chapter 20 verse 17 where Jesus says, I'm ascending to my father and your father, speaking to Mary. So at this point Messiaen starts employing communicable language. How does he do it? Well, there are three leitmotifs. Well, actually, there's, there's, there's another one over the page, but just in this little bit I'm going to look at. Um, there are three leitmotifs. So first we have a leitmotif for sun. There's then a second leitmotif for towards, and note it goes upwards. Okay. And then we have another one, father, pair, P-E-R-E. -E. So in other words, what he's done there is he's put son, and then he's put towards, going up, and then he's given us father. And then he spells out the words, votre père, your father. So remember the verses, I'm ascending to my father and your father. We have son, Jesus, um, moving towards, upwards, uh, the father and then your father and the spelling out of your father sounds like this we have some chords as well as the octaves So there's a little example of Messiaen using his communicable language the briefest of introductions 
I will return to this particular movement, by the way, because it's the, the longest movement of all in the Lead to San Sacramento, so it's deserving of its own video uh, to take you through it uh, page by page. And so I'll probably say a little bit more about the communicable language there and how he uses it. But that gives you the briefest of introductions. Whether one can hear these things in uh, ignorance of what's happening, well, I, I would question whether it really matters. Just think about those Wagner leitmotifs for a moment. If you go into a performance of a Wagner opera and you know your leitmotifs, then you hear Wagner communicating to you about the drama on stage in the music and that's wonderful but you know what you can still go in there and make the most of a performance of a Wagner opera without knowing about the leitmotifs it's just another layer. Messiaen was struck by the fact that whilst, whilst music cannot necessarily communicate directly at you sort of in words what it can do is engender feelings and emotions uh, it can intimate things and that's what his starting point is um, with the communicable language. He talks, for example, of the way in which he believed angels could communicate telepathically with one another. So he's trying to communicate with our hearts when he writes in this way, uh, but whether we have a deep working knowledge of it or not, uh, I'm not so sure how much it matters. I think it still sounds compelling. But anyway, there we are. That's the end of episode three. See you next time.